Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm Jennifer Bagley with CI Web Group, and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining this morning. I'm Jennifer Bagley with CI Web Group, and welcome to the uh, webinar series. This is a fourth series, or the fourth web webinar in uh, an ongoing uh, series of training and presentations designed to be able to help you guys achieve accelerated results. Today, we're going to be concentrating primarily on um, the structure of uh, the structure of an effective marketing campaign. All righty. So that being said, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, CI Web Group, uh, we started a little bit earlier than 2006. We've got a team of over 70 uh, technical staff and um, team members that are experts in various fields, everything from web design, development, search engine optimization, uh, social media marketing, local listings, and more. We occupy a little bit of land across the states and, and abroad. Uh, technically, the ability to be able to keep up with today's trends requires a lot um, from an expertise standpoint, from a mindset standpoint, uh, as well as uh, reporting measurements and analysis. If you guys think about the explosive power of the internet and technology and how rapidly things have changed as far as how people are connected, where they search for information, how they access data, how they make decisions. Uh, literally, we're talking about a, a life cycle that is, has the most compounding results that we've ever seen with anything from a growth standpoint. So if you look at the number of users using mobile devices now versus five years ago, uh, or smartphones, smartwatches, um, and so forth, we don't really have anywhere to go but up, and it's happening rapidly. So search engines, technology providers, as well as consumers are adopting these trends extremely fast. And as a, uh, as a dealer, someone who markets products and services to those potential consumers, be it residential or uh, commercial, we've got to be able to keep up. We've got to be able to meet them where they are. So... Um, Ferguson and Dan Knight have put together this webinar series in collaboration with CI Web Group um, really to help you start thinking more like a growth hacker um, a, versus a business owner, which is our traditional position, or a traditional digital marketer, and definitely to bring you into um, today's day and age of uh, online marketing simply because that's where your consumers are searching. Um, there's a big difference between a digital marketer and a growth hacker. A digital marketer is a person who manages programs, right? They do activities that are related to digital marketing, search engine marketing, social media, online advertisements, pay-per-click, SEO, and so forth. That's a traditional digital marketer. Whereas a growth hacker, this is someone who really understands design, coding, analytics, viral marketing, and they are relentlessly tweaking and optimizing their programs in order to produce better results. And this is really where we want to get to. Um, when you start attending the webinar series, in the beginning, it's almost like looking at a, a whiteboard and there's, you know, a hundred different circles and nothing's touching. You know, the acronyms, they're not familiar. 
um, the processes, they're not familiar, and it feels a little bit like, you know, you're kind of treading water trying to keep up, and I get it. Um, you went through the same process as you learned your trade and mastered your trade. I just encourage you guys to continue to participate, keep showing up, go back to the archives as you continue to uh, participate and learn and as well as implement and research and be able to evaluate reports and be able to see um, how to make progress, how to get results. Those circles are going to start touching, then they're going to start melding and they're going to formulate a circle, a, one giant circle and you're going to you know, have these aha moments where everything starts clicking and making sense. That being said, when we're talking about growth hacking, I'm going to use web designs as, as the best example right out of the gate. Of course, this applies to everything, but typically what happens with website design, um, especially in specific industries, is they have a process similar to updating their brochure, their logo, or their business card meaning that they will come up with the design or have a company or an agency come up with the design, develop the site, and then put it out there and it sits stagnant. And it may be years before that site is uh, altered, modified, evaluated in order to be able to uh, get better results. It's not an online brochure. It's not a static object. When you're looking at uh, your website, this process on the left-hand side where you launch a website and then it sits and sits and sits and sits and then you launch another website and it sits and sits and sits and it may be three years, five years, uh, and I've seen much longer. The challenge is, is that there's a significant period of time where the site is underachieving. It's not achieving. The world around it is changing. Search, search engines are changing. The algorithm is changing. Compliance requirements are changing. Technology, devices, uh, applications, social mediums, channels. There's so many things around, but primarily the most important thing to consider is that your customers are changing. They're evolving. Um, you have you know, parents whose children, who are now adults with their own children, are starting to jump in and do a lot of that research and help make those buying decisions when their parents need services. You have definitely a group of more savvy adults. The largest population on Facebook is 35 to 55 year old adults. It's not kids. So um, we have to be very careful. And then, you know, quite frankly, if we plan on being in business in a thousand days, we've got another generation that is. Uh, definitely got a head start as far as their adaptation of technology as it changes and evolves. So we've got to make sure that we're positioning ourselves in a growth hacker mindset where we are implementing a process, evaluating the results, and continuing to tweak and modify and tweak and modify. For example, you guys, you know, you have a much different situation than uh, the majority of companies out there, your seasons literally drive an entirely different buyer for four months or six months or three months, depending on where you're located, out of the year. So in four months of the year, you've got a group of buyers that are specifically searching for services related to air conditioning. And it, you know, if you're in the real hot, if you're out in the desert or you're sitting in the middle of Arizona, um, you know, they're looking for air conditioning installation, replacement, service, repair. If you're sitting in a cooler area, it may be maintenance and service and tune-ups and so forth. In the fall and spring, that changes to primarily maintenance, service, tune-ups, and sometimes, uh, you know, preventative type services. And then if you have four seasons and you're driving into the winter seasons as well, You've got variations in phrases and things that consumers refer to. So not only in the air conditioning environment are they searching for air conditioning, air conditioners, AC, in the heating environment for a different time frame of the year, they're searching for either heater or furnace and our East Coast people are boilers and so forth. So it's really, really critical that there is a... Um, a very definitive approach and um, well-executed approach to thinking more like a growth hacker, someone who is um, 
you know, dedicated to the process of implementing, evaluating, researching, refining, revising, and then doing it again and continuing to do that until you can get better results. All of this combined, as we start to put these things in place, the goal is to compress time in order to achieve accelerated results, to grow your business faster. Um, growing your business, that's not just sales. We have to be careful. Sometimes this is evaluated and it's just looked at as a sales function. It's not just that. Growing your business means growing the bottom line. Growing the bottom line happens from a combined effort from an operations and logistics side, which is being able to improve profit margins, uh, and that is driven from improving operational uh, processes, efficiencies, systems, as well as people, people, systems, and products and services. And it's also driven from increasing sales or altering the types of customers you're doing business with. So maybe it is targeting a uh, a higher net worth area so that you have higher margins when uh, providing the same services, but continuing to figure out ways to be able to tackle the bottom line by improving operations, operational efficiencies, streamlining, automation, uh, leveraging technology to convert time to cash versus always having to use people. And then in addition to that, growing from a sales environment, uh, either in margin, and or in quantity, volume, space, location, and so forth. All right, so the process of, of leveraging digital versus your traditional advertising mediums, um, you know, I may not need to tell you or stress it, but I love being able to stand up in front of audiences and ask them, you know, how do you buy? Go back to being mom or dad or, or aunt or uncle or homeowner and think about how you make your buying decisions. How do you identify new service providers? How do you identify if it's somebody you want to do business with or a product you want to purchase or a company you want to uh, contract with? You know, what's your process? Are you looking at traditional advertising mediums? Are you looking at print and newspaper and radio and flyers and door hangers and mass mailers and coupon books and you know the bucket seat on a grocery cart <laughs> in the grocery store? Or are you going through an inbound process of being able to go online and maybe ask Siri a question. Siri, you need a uh, pool contractor in blank, Arizona, and so forth. So the best part about uh, learning and developing good principles for effective digital marketing strategies is you essentially have a sales force that's working 24-7, 365 days a year. These guys, your website, it doesn't take vacation. It doesn't uh, call in sick. Um, it doesn't have a lazy day. It doesn't have an unproductive day. It doesn't get distracted. Um, it does take a bit of work and effort uh, to be able to master the process and continue to tweak and revise and, and improve the process over time. However, this system, this process is literally like having a sales force that is up working around the clock, 24-7, 365. That being said, when we're starting off with a marketing program, the very first thing we have to think about is the buyer's mindset. You know, how do they think? And that's why I always refer back to, go back to being homeowner, mom or dad. Think about yourself as a consumer, just as an average Joe, right? Or Jane. Okay. The buyer's mindset is, it's first and foremost, how do they think? How do they make decisions? Now within a human, there's typically going to be four different personality styles that drive how they search, what level of detail, and what are their drivers? Are they more emotionally driven? Are they more tactical? Um, are they uh, more direct, quick decision makers? Or do they take a long time to process, more analytical? Um, and those th those are things that we'll we'll go through throughout the series, and you'll you'll start to identify with the different personality styles and what is important. Um, but those things have to be considered. And then once you understand the buyer's mindset, how do they want to be marketed to, or do they want to be marketed to? Would they rather be able to just go do their normal search and have you be an option? And then present them with the information they need in the format that makes it easy and 
in a manner that makes it simple for them based on their personal uh, use of technology, based on their time, their schedule, and their own personal dislikes and, and preferences? Do you make it easy for them to reach out to you in order to take that next step? So first, we've got to be present. We have to know where are they searching. Every one of these marketing activities, so we've got up here just a handful, right? We've got email marketing. So typically, this is going to be most effective when it's directed towards people who already know who you are. This is past leads, prospects, uh, as well as customers, vendors. Maybe it's third-party referral sources if you've got to be an I group or a network of other vendors that uh, sell different services and you guys refer back to each other. But bottom line, sending an email to a stranger is probably not going to get you very far. So you want to be careful of buying lists. They just don't convert. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's no different. When you open your inbox, what's the first thing you do? Clean out the junk. Direct. So direct advertising or direct mail. Again, go back to being a consumer. When you go to your mailbox, what do you do first? Do you listen to radio advertisements? Do you actually place a call? Would you call a company you're not doing business with? Think about radio, print, television, a billboard that's on the highway you drive down every single day on your way to work. Does it drive you to take action? You also have paid search or pay-per-click. When you're sitting on Google and you're looking at... Uh, the listings at the very top of Google, there's going to be a series of ads. Do you have the personality style that's going to click on the ads? There is an audience. Usually it's 18% of all shoppers are going to click on those ads. Um, is it the type of client that's a good customer for you? Maybe. Uh, maybe it's a necessity in order to be able to drive business while you're working on other methods, organic methods, and so forth. Also, social. And referrals. So when we move through this pipeline, the very first thing we have to consider is awareness. How do we make sure that the consumer or potential prospect is aware that we exist? How do we meet them where they are? How do we present ourselves as an option in their regular process of trying to find a solution? Once we have the awareness, how do we become uh, a consideration? How do we get in the mix? Uh, what's their perception when they land on your website? Do they feel like, oh, this might be a mom and pop, I'm not really comfortable. You know, obviously, installing a heating and air conditioning system is not the cheapest thing on the planet. It's a slightly big investment to a lot of homeowners. Um, so how do you make sure that a consumer is not thrown off instantaneously when they land on your website or when they go Google your company name or they Google your company name with the word reviews in their normal research process. These are normal things that they go through in order to identify a company or a product or a service and choose whether or not they want to do business with you. So how do we make sure that we stay a consideration? Then how do we create intent? How do we get the customer to move? Every prospect that's coming to your website um, has a different intent. Does your website properly communicate and connect with their intent? Not yours, but theirs. A lot of times I'll go visit dealer websites and to me it looks like they're selling equipment. You guys don't sell equipment. Technically you don't. When a consumer contacts you, a residential, let's go down the residential, they have a problem. Their problem is their toes are too cold in their bedroom or one room is hotter than the other room or they've got condensation on the windows or mold growing and they don't know where it's coming from or their energy bills are too high um, or they don't have air conditioning. They're burning up. Their kids are burning up. They've got pets and they've got pet dander and issues with allergies. Their husband has sleep apnea, right? There's, they have an issue. Um, maybe they've always wanted an air conditioning system in their house. They've never had it. And the intent is, can I afford it? You know, are there discounts? Are there promotions? Are there financing options? Are there rebates? What is a consumer thinking? What is their intent? And how do you connect with it? And then finally, the last interaction, which is the actual conversion to a customer. Not the conversion to, to a prospect, from a lead to a prospect, which here, we're trying to generate the lead. This we're trying to create a prospect, and that has to be by design, not accident. And then finally, we're trying to convert them to a customer. 
that's going to affect the bottom line. In order to get them to make a decision, now, you know, that really gets out of the digital realm and you start getting into um, personality, people, being able to rely and count on your staff, whoever's representing your company. Do they have the ability to uh, make sure that you stay a consideration? That again, you understand what the consumer's needs are and that you're addressing their needs for a solution versus selling a product. Um, and do you have the ability to move them forward to get them to make a decision? There are other influencers and they will identify those online, such as reviews. We're at a point where consumers are more willing to trust what Google says about your company, meaning other people who have done business with you, uh, then they will a referral from their best friend or their mother or their family member. So we've got to make sure that we don't lose this opportunity. You may have the best salesperson on staff, you may have the best pricing, you may have the best reputation uh, that you can tell them about. But if it's not visually represented online and consumers cannot find this information on their, on their own, you may actually lose the uh, you may actually lose the conversion before you ever knew that you had a qualified prospect. All right. So we'll come back to buyer personas. This is your funnel. First, get found. Attract visitors with premium content. No content, no can do. Okay. Um, the way Google works is it index it indexes content based on a series of labels. Those labels are what the title is, what the description is, how many times a phrase is used in the content, the density of a particular phrase and location inside the content, um, along with a whole bunch of other things we'll get into in the SEO classes, okay? But no content, you just, there's nothing to put in the drawer, there's nothing to get found. Um, so we have to make sure that that is part of your process and if, if you don't have it, you can have a gorgeous website without having one page per service, per service area, per location, uh, per frequently asked question and so forth. Then if a consumer's looking for it, there'll be nothing there for Google to index. Uh, so that you get into blogs, search engine optimization, the process of being found on uh, page one, number one below the ads and below the business, Google business listing or Google Maps premium listings. Okay, and search engine optimization is an on-page process, the things that are occurring on your website. Are you relative? Do you have pages that are relative to what the consumers are looking for? Are you current? Are you posting content frequently related to those terms? And the most important factor, are you trusted? Are you trusted has to do with off-page SEO, which is building reviews, social media um, engagement, your social equity, your social trust factor, your social rank or trust rank, as well as backlink building. That's driven from writing content, posting it on valid and relative and popular third-party websites, and somewhere in that content, it references you as the expert, and the content is about a particular topic that your customers are also looking for. Um, that, in a nutshell, is search engine optimization, which can be one of the most powerful ways to drive new business. Pay-per-click, uh, it's simple, it's fast, it's expensive. Uh, it, there are some benefits to uh, how it helps you perform organically. Uh, that's another class. And then, of course, social media and local listings. So first, get found. Second, convert. Conversions happen on your website, you guys. It doesn't, it's, that's the number one place. People, will, even if they find you on a business listing, eventually they're going to get to your website. They're not typically going to do business with you because they found you on Yext um, or Angie's List or another place. They're going to eventually land on your website, and we've got to be able to convert them. So do we have a click to call phone number? Do we quickly tell the customer who you are, what you do, where you are, how to reach you? Do we have a button for apply for financing, sign up for maintenance, get an estimate, free estimates, uh, troubleshoot your issues, schedule uh, 
uh, let's talk, schedule time, online scheduling. There are a ton of different ways to convert and every consumer is going to want something different. And depending on their own schedule and their timelines, that may even change within the same person. Finally, close. Turning those leads into prospects, then converting them into a sale, utilizing offers, uh, as well as um, your consultive skills, your ability to, to persuade and influence a consumer into a buyer. And then finally, we repeat the process by generating loyal customers and getting them to refer more. This entire process, it's not a one-time shot. This is where we go back to growth hacking. We have to research, implement, measure, analyze, refine, and improve results on a regular basis. It doesn't just stay static. So digital marketing, the structure as a whole, you guys, it's, it's um, slightly complicated. There are typically, with a good program, there are going to be thousands of small little tiny details all happening. Um, hopefully, they are all in alignment with a cohesive and comprehensive strategy that works together. So your uh, design and development team is communicating to your SEO team, your SEO team is working with your paperclip team, your social media team is working with your uh, local listings and so forth. Everybody needs to be working in tandem, identifying uh, physical assets that can be reused and leveraged across multiple mediums. So if you have a great review and it shows up on Yelp, taking that great review, turning it into a graphic or an image, republishing or purposing it on your social media accounts, publishing it on your website, same thing. You have a great promotion. Uh, maybe Day and Night's got an awesome rebate or a manufacturer's promotion that's going on. Taking that promotion, dropping into an image and being able to submit through all of your local listings. So there's over 75 local listings plus your social media accounts and your website. Again, it's all interconnected. All of these pieces have to work together and it needs to be a comprehensive strategy. You don't want to sound like, uh, you don't want it to work like um, the old, what was it, Sesame Street. One of these kids is doing their own thing. So it, you don't want it to work like that because then you're going to have unleveraged dollars. So by segregating all of the different people and uh, and or teams or agencies or companies, you have a more decentralized approach, less effective, and you're diluting your dollars, not getting the return that you could be. So when it comes to digital marketing, you know, it's everything is about doing the right things in the right order at the right time. It's easy to go to a webinar or a training and get all excited because some twit stands on stage and teaches you how to tweet. Did I just say that? However, you want to be careful. Um, what we've done with uh, Ferguson and Day and Night is basically go through and based on, you know, 15 years knowledge for us in doing digital marketing specifically in the HVAC industry, um, combined with all of the power and the knowledge that is brought from the manufacturer slash distributor, um, that allows us to be able to put together what we know is a comprehensive baseline startup program. And that's essentially what we've done. What does the infrastructure need to look like? The infrastructure is really simple and it's kind of, you know, some of the necessary evils you just got to get done because it's part of the equation and it matters. And then some things that are proactively designed to be able to uh, drive operational efficiencies and new sales opportunities so that you can continue to grow the business. Then we have to put our growth hacker hat on and continue to report, measure, analyze, revise, and refine the program to be able to continue to drive better results. So, um, I employ you, you guys I, like have a target on your back, I swear, where every company is trying to sell you something, some service. You want to be very, very careful. Um, this is not, digital marketing is a strategy. It is not like a catalog. It's not like buying things out of, you know, a bucket. Whoever throws the next catalog with the next great activity on there, okay, let's do this, and then let's do this. So be careful of the salesperson presentation. Um, 
this is a very, it needs to be a very structured process to be able to deliver the kind of continued results and improvement in those results over a period of time. And uh, that's a much different process than kind of cherry picking different solutions. So the right, do the right things in the right order at the right time. In order to do that, this top message, you must have clarity in order to focus. You must focus in order to execute. You must execute in order to drive results. Do nothing, nothing happens. If you don't have clarity, you'll do the cherry picking and try and do a whole bunch of different things at the same time, which is a lack of focus. A lack of focus will also produce a lack of results. So clarity, focus, execution, that will drive accelerated results. Um, this is another view of the funnel that I showed you earlier. So the funnel is simple. There are thousands of different mediums that can drive visitors. Your visitors land on your website. Your website is designed to do something. Hopefully it's designed to convert. The analytics will show you whether or not that's true. Your analytics will also mirror from a progression standpoint your bottom line. Typically your analytics if I was to line up your QuickBooks account and we pulled, you know, graph the charts of your most recent reports or uh, P&L statements, and we also lined them up to your analytics, all too often these lines are similar. The graph and the chart is similar. All right. So the infrastructure. From a prioritized approach, these are the basics. First and foremost, we've got to have a mobile responsive website with the proper content and a blog. So you have consistent and ongoing content being posted to your site. Google thinks you're your current, your relative, then we'll go into trusted. Next, you've got to have an integrated CRM and an online scheduling system. We've got to have a focused and intelligent way of collecting leads and prospect information and managing those leads and prospect to identify what marketing strategies are working the best, to be able to take those leads and prospects that didn't convert to a customer, put them into some kind of uh, sales automation funnel, be able to remarket back to them to make progress. Your reporting and analytics, local listings, your Google business listing, formal review process, social media, SEO, pay-per-click, and a sales automation process. The next series of uh, trainings are going to be focused on each one of these line items individually, and we'll dive into each one of these uh, with greater depth and, and uh, examples. In order to be able to implement the process, these are your primary drivers. So you guys get to, um, you have an opportunity to earn ICP credits for attending the webinar live or any of these webinars live, they're part of your program. In order to get your ICP credits, you've got to answer the series of questions that are gonna come to you guys through the webinar after the webinar is over. So I'm gonna go over those questions now so that uh, it's really, really simple for you guys to um, be able to answer those and get, uh, get those credits. So first and foremost, what drives leads? Search engine marketing, which is the combination of SEO and pay-per-click, content marketing, social media, local listings, and email marketing. So those will be your answers. If you select any or all of the above, that would be great. Next, what online methods are used for customer conversions? First is call to actions. Next, so a call to action may be apply for financing, sign up for maintenance, schedule service, uh, request an estimate, online scheduling, lead nurturing, landing pages, or all of the above. Important steps to monitoring a marketing campaign. The process is simple and actually, um, if you're a trained project manager, then this is, this is the process. Research, implement, measure, analyze, refine, improve. That's the process for any business in any uh, area to be able to improve results. What are the primary drivers? So first, we need to know what are prospects searching for? These are your solutions. 
Where are prospects searching? Simple, online. How are they making decisions? They're making decisions based on reviews and social equity. So let's say you pass the initial perception uh, feeling. Very next, it's going to be reviews and your social equity. Geolocation, where do they live? Not necessarily where your office is, but where do they live? Seasons, and then again, things like promotions and financing. All right, now, if you guys are interested, one of the things that um, Ferguson and Dan Knight have coordinated um, with us is you guys have access to a complimentary strategy session. This is where we'll do an interview with you and we'll go through, evaluate uh, where you guys are at in your business. So you're going to get some really comprehensive reports, uh, a complete report on your website, how it's performing, your overall marketing strategy, including backlinks and social and search and local. You'll also get a report that identifies any errors um, or omissions for your Google um, and or local business listings. Very important. We've found wrong phone numbers and addresses and company names and more. Um, and in addition to that, once we gather that information, um, we'll be able to work with you as well as uh, your sales manager or TSM and be able to put together a program that can help you based on your specific needs, uh, drive additional results or help you get closer to your goals. With that, you guys, I appreciate you taking time out of your business to uh, focus some energy on your business instead of in your business. I know it's uh, still in the busy season. Right now, you guys should be prepping for your winter strategy. You're almost at the end of that mark. So if you haven't done this, um, please grab your cell phone. It's really easy. Grab your cell phone. There is a um, button that's for text. Click your text message button. And in the send area where you're going to choose who you're going to send to, you're going to send a message to 44222. And in the message, the body of the message, just type the word Ferguson, hit send. It's going to send you a confirmation back. It's going to act ask you to reply with your email. So just type in your email address, hit send. That's going to send a notice to our team to get you enrolled in a strategy session. Also, you're going to get a copy of this webinar and some previous webinars uh, and make sure that you guys uh, get on the calendar for that strategy session. With that, thank you so much for attending. I appreciate it and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar.